good. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Last time on the channel, we got the lifters. We got them in the engine. I was able to put some checking push rods in there, set the valve train in place, and roll the engine around. And for the first time, I was able to see valve action, which was a huge step for me. That's huge. It's been years since I've wanted to witness that. And here we are. It's happening. My old buddy Brian Landers used to say, the project's not interesting until you got valve action. And uh, that's so true. What we're going to do this week is I'm going to show you how I measure the stand height for the TND rockers. It's super simple. They provide a little tool that we use. We're going to check that just to make sure it's, it's right there close. And then um, we're going to measure the engine for push rods. We're going to measure the radiuses in both the rocker arm and the lifter. And we're also going to measure the overall length of the push rod so that we can get those parts ordered. I use Smith Brothers push rods in my engines. And uh, one of the reasons why I do that is because they're right here on the West Coast up in Redmond, Oregon. Normally, when you call those guys, your push rods are getting made the next day. Okay, so this is how you verify that the TND rocker stands are at the right height. It's a super simple process that involves this height gauge that TND provides with the rocker system. So what you got to do is you get your valve in here. What I did is I put a little tie wrap around the valve to hold it at the uh, closed position and then you take the rocker shaft which I went ahead and just made a checking shaft out of a piece of 5 8 tubing um, because the rocker shafts are 5 8 in diameter so if we put the checking shaft on like that and then we use the key see if I can get behind this and make it show up. So what's supposed to happen is the, the valve tip, the valve tip is going to sit right in this little nest right here. Right as this arm touches on the top of the shaft. So just like this. And that's all that's needed get just a little reflection on it you can see that the pattern is right there All right, quick story. 
I finally get the lifters in there. I get those tiny little 5 16 checking push rods in and quickly realize there is not enough room for a beefy push rod in that head, period. And it looked like a lot of material was going to need to be removed in order to clear a good push rod. I mean, in the past, I've hand ground push rod clearance in, into some, some heads. The thing is, is some heads they just barely hit in an area or whatever. But in this B1 head, it actually has a 5 8 diameter hole that is cut through the casting. And the push rod was hitting really bad on that thing. And to hand port all the way through that would be a pain in the butt. I didn't I don't want to do it. Didn't want to do it. So I'm working Monday morning and this problem's in the back of my head. I'm like, what the heck am I gonna do? So I'm thinking, who do I know with the mill? I don't know anybody. Um, how much is it gonna cost to have somebody machine these? I'm thinking a lot of money. And I don't wanna do it by hand because it's gonna be a lot of work. And out of the blue, I get a text message from my buddy Dave. It's a picture of a mill of like, a heavy duty bench top style 220 volt mill milling machine and he says 150 bucks I'm staring at my phone in disbelief I cannot believe that he just texted me this <laughs> so uh, Saturday rolls around and I text Dave and I say, hey, uh, would you mind if I try your mill out on my cylinder head project? He said, all you got to do is wire it up. You're welcome to it. So I grabbed my cylinder heads, went by Home Depot, grabbed a, a, a 220 plug and went over to Dave's. And what you're about to see right here is what happened. So I ended up ordering the push rods from Smith Brothers last week, I think. I'm not sure what day it was. It might have been, um, I don't know, probably like Tuesday, I'm thinking. Maybe maybe Wednesday. And uh, it could have even been Thursday. It might have been Thursday. Um, I call him up. I talk to uh, Tony on the phone. And I tell him what I'm doing. I explain the the setup and he asked me all the questions I answered everything best I could and uh, he uh, gave me a quote and I said sold and he said well we'll probably get machining on the parts on Tuesday next week you may see him by the weekend but I don't want to promise and I said hey no problem sounds good um, I'm just glad there are you know, I'm, I'm just glad we're working on it. I get home from work. It was amazing. I just called him up, talked to Tony, gave him my specs. 
and uh, voila, here we go. I, uh, I had extras made, just, just in case. Here they are. That's 18 of them. Um, so I don't know if you can see that right there, but it says quantity 18. There's the, the order number. Here's the overall length, uh, 10.300. Here's a part number in case uh, I end up burning one up and having to use a spare, then I can text Tony and he'll he'll send me uh, more of the same. Golly, those are amazing. So the push rod is 7 16 diameter, 165 wall. It's 4130 chromoly with an oil hole. It's got a 532 radius ball ball, both ends. And then the bottom end, I had to machine it to match the Crower lifter. Hey, that was the last of the parts. Push rods were it. That was the last thing I needed to put this thing together. That's a milestone in itself. Super excited. Uh, the push rods look beautiful. Three-day service for custom push rods? Are you kidding me? I mean, that alone makes them worth their weight in gold. When you have companies out there that are willing to go the extra mile to provide a really good product and get it to you in a timely fashion, that's kind of rare nowadays. I mean, I know there's a lot of great companies out there, and it, it's just that when you come across one like that, it makes you really appreciate it because we all know the, the game, the aftermarket game of ordering and then praying for its arrival. <laughs> uh, so hats off to Smith Brothers, uh, class act. We made room for the push rods to go through the heads. All the push rod tubes are machined. That was a good thing. Um, Knowing that the valve train geometry is right where it needs to be, that gives that gives a guy some confidence. Um, having a stable valve train, as we're going to talk about in an upcoming episode, um, I'm going to do a camshaft episode, and uh, I'm going to talk about what it takes to run 800 plus lift on a street and drive it. What do you got to do to get that done? That's not an easy task. You don't just throw big camshafts in engines and hope for the best. So uh, they tend to eat parts. And uh, I'm gonna, and they, they tend to be a little unruly on the street. So I'm going to make a video about that, um, about you know how to, how to get it done. Intake manifold. The intake manifold, getting it lined up, getting it fitted. Why you got to run two dominators on a sheet metal intake on the street? Why you have to do that? The other thing is valley trays. I want to I want to do a video on big block Mopar valley trays. I still have to make the valley tray for this engine, and I want to make a video showing how critical the valley tray is as it relates to, of all things, engine oiling. <laughs> uh, you might be surprised by that video. All right, see you guys soon.